Okay, I got this Labula 7 inch capacitive touchscreen from eBay. And uh, he said the box would have some wear on it, so that's true. Now let's take off this little ribbon over here. You know what I think? I think that this is just very generic and Labula just wanted to add their brand, so they just made a ring around it. I don't think anywhere else it says Labula, so yeah. Um, let's take a look at the back real quick. Here is the information, the specifications. Um, touchscreen, IPS, HDMI, 16 by 9 all that fun stuff. Fit security system monitor, blah, blah, blah. All right. Brr. Okay. Nice little foam cover. Okay, very nice. And has a plastic screen over it. Someone wrote four. I don't know why, but they did. Um, and uh, let's take a look at the rest of the components, and then we'll get back to the monitor. Um, this is just the foam. It comes with a screen protector, and obviously the quick start guide, which I think Labula did put this in because it has their email address on it. Um, let's open this up right here, see what other goodies it does come with. And over here we see it does come with a bunch of ribbon cables, and I'll show you what that's for in a minute. But otherwise, I think the rest of the cables are pretty straightforward. He did say open box, so... Um, it's actually a pretty good addition. Here's a power brick. I'm going to tell you the specifications for this. It's 5 volts at 3 amps, so uh, that's that's pretty high. Um, so if you want to make sure that you have enough power, then you'll definitely want to use that power brick. Um, let's see what other things came with. This is a stylus, I believe. Um, let's push it out. Oh no, it's an actual pen. And it's a stylus at the other end. Very cool. Okay. And over here are the legs, and we'll use that to hold it up. And over here are just some cables. Here's an HDMI cable. It looks like a regular, yeah, this looks like a regular HDMI cable. Over here is a micro cable, short one. And this is a long micro cable, which is nice. One of them for the touch and one of them for power. Um, it's nice that they included all that. Okay, I put those back in, and let's open this one now. All right. So this is meant specifically for um, a Raspberry Pi. Um, I think it would work with other boards, but the boards have to be in the proper configuration in order for them to work. So let me show you how to configure this on the Raspberry Pi 4, and um, I'll show you. Here is my Raspberry Pi 4. Ta -da. Here are all the screws that it comes with. And they gave me a cute little screwdriver. As you can see right here, there's a spot for a Raspberry Pi Zero and a full Raspberry Pi. It even has a little indicator, uh, Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi Zero. I wonder if you could take these out and put them over there so that you can actually use them for the Zero. But let's put it in and screw it right in. So it goes right there. So now that I got the Raspberry Pi in, let's focus on a few things of the actual um, display. First of all, it has dual speakers, as in uh, stereo speakers, which is nice. That means that it has two which is very nice. Um, if you look a little closer, it has power, menu, up, down, and exit buttons on the side over here, just like any display, which is nice because other ones that are this size and look very similar to this do not have this. Um, there is a connector right here for something and another connector right here for something. Um, there's also a uh, full HDMI port. Um, this is five volt touch and this is five volt uh, input power. Um, I know that there are some that have the power on and off for the display. This one doesn't have that, but this does have a ribbon cable for the HDMI so that you can plug in the HDMI. And I believe actually this is for these two cables that it does come with. Um, so that's very nice. And you can plug them in directly so you don't have to use these. So instead of the uh, five volt touch and the power, you can just use this, which is, which is totally cool. Okay, so this ribbon cable is a micro HDMI to the ribbon connection HDMI. So let's plug that in. Once you get it in like that, we just click this down and it should be connected. And the ribbon cable is a little bit stressed out over here, but I think it should be fine. This is for if you have a different version of the Pi and you want to use the full sized uh, HDMI. Um, and this is for the pins on the IO. And I'm gonna figure out where. So right here it's telling me that you want to uh, connect the Pi 3B or, or 4, and you could use these pins over here. And I have connected them just like the diagram shows. And this right here is a touchscreen cable. We're going to plug it right in there. 
And there we go. It's all plugged in and ready to go. Now that I got all the cables attached, I will be able to uh, run it. Um, I was able to put a micro SD card in, but uh, just letting you know, that's actually very hard to put in after the fact. Now I just plugged in uh, 2.4 amps. Hopefully it's going to be good enough. And uh, which way is it? This way. Okay, let's see how it goes. Oh, this way. Never mind. There we go. Let's see how it works. Alright, and here it is. Um, looks very nice. Obviously, I still have the screen protector on. But it looks very nice. Um, let's see how the touch works. Well, it's not working at all through this. Okay, so I just have to be a little more aggressive with the touch. Um, there we go. Actually, not too bad. That's working fine. Now, let's see if it's easier for me to use that when I peel off the... Hmm. Okay. It's okay. This one okay? It has some weird colors, actually. Not gonna lie. Right here, some weird colors. Okay, it's doing relatively well uh, with this, but as you can see, there's like yellow streaks. I don't know. I took off the plastic. It seems okay. Um, I don't think it's the best, but... Oh. And there it, there it is. I don't know what's going on over there. Let's open this up again and see what's going on. Oh my goodness, this blue stuff over here. What's going on? On the black screen, it's very fuzzy. So the dark colors for some reason are showing blue pixels. Change to HDMI source and it's doing the same thing. Okay, so I plugged it in to a completely separate input. This is a Raspberry Pi 4B also. However, um, this is a different one. Uh, it seems like the monitor may have just not had enough power or the connection to the HDMI cable was bad. I'm gonna do some troubleshooting to figure out which one it was. Maybe it just didn't have enough power or maybe the HDMI cable is bad. However, um, it is performing perfectly now, so uh, I'm pretty happy. I'll open the terminal real quick. And none of that shenanigans. And I don't know how I'll be able to type with this, but hey, um, it's working, so that's nice. Um, and there are no black spots. I try to lift this up a little bit so that you can see. Um, so I like this. Um, and especially for the price that I got it for, big fan. It seems like the culprit was the HDMI cable, and actually, um, even with the power provided by my 2.4 amps from this random charger that I have on my desk, it seems like it is working very well. Although I have to say that the touch is a little bit off, just maybe an inch off. However, for the price, like I said, I think it's amazing. And uh, honestly, I'm a big fan. Um, and I forgot to put the legs on, so I'm going to do that right now. And here it is with the legs. These legs are actually pretty pretty hefty. So I they're plastic, and they're made out of lower-end quality stuff. I mean, they're pretty good. Although, when you're actually using with the Raspberry Pi, and you have to use this HDMI situation, um, yeah, you can't actually put it down because, as you can see, let me turn on the light so you can see a little better. As you can see, it's sticking down a little bit too much for that. So, uh... That won't work, and when the power's in it, it surely won't work. Um, then there'll be two things, but um, it uh, it's good for if you're using it with something else. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this helped you, and have a great day.